Barry and Anderson, we talked quite a bit about them. The backcourt of uh, Drakeford and Stephen Brown. Drakeford more of a defensive player, isn't he, John? Yeah, he is. He likes to cinch up on the opposing guards, get really into their face, and try and make a lot of steals. Look for him to be a real defensive threat this afternoon. Let's, let's check uh, Jim Anderson out before we go to Oregon. He's in his fifth year. He's been around this program forever. Back in your SC days, he was there. He was an assistant <laughs> for 28 years, so he paid his dues. You can tell. I've kept most of my hair. He's lost a little bit of his in this, in this round. He's doing very well, though. He had a great year his first year. Went to the tournament, tied for the uh, Pac-10 title. Here's the uh, Ducks starting lineup. Parker Potter, Johnson, Wilkins, and uh, Williams. What about their big people? I know uh, Coach Green yesterday was saying that he needs to get more points inside. He really does, and Aaron Johnson is really the key to that issue. He's got to be very uh, cognizant of getting into the paint, going in with his strengths, and really putting some pressure on the opposing team. And there is Jerry Green's second season. He was at the University of North Carolina, Asheville, for nine years. And uh, the previous four years was with Roy Williams at Kansas. So he knows all about winning basketball. Now, both of these teams are very young. Seven first-year players for Oregon State. A couple of red shirts, four true freshmen. They have two walk-ons. I mean, they've put out signs on campus to get people to uh, <laughs> play basketball this year in Corvallis. And the same situation, John, for the University of Oregon. They have three starters back, all juniors, but seven new players. And Jerry Green has gone the junior college route as well. It's funny because when you look in the media guide, the synopsis, the overlook of uh, the seasons coming up, almost verbatim, they both the uh, schools wrote the same thing. You'll need a program this year in Corvallis and Eugene. It is interesting to see. Oregon State getting set against the University of Oregon from Eugene. We'll get it up in the air right after this break.
it's difficult for any team to play here at MacArthur Court. The fans are so close to the players, it tends to make them get a little bit edgy, and oftentimes, until you get accustomed to the surrounding, you'll see a lot of turnovers early in the game. Surprising that that would happen for Oregon, since this is their home court. Johnson got the great position. Potter back up and in. Potter gave Barry enough fakes to send him to the moon, but I think it was the size, after all, that helped him score the basket. Looks like a guy uh, you and I both know, Dan Issel. Uh, <laughs> got 16 up fakes before putting up good entry pass inside, and Gerard Brown was hacked as he went up. Well, Potter gets the ball down low, and Barry bouncing up and down, which is exactly what you want your defensive player to do, is leave his feet so that he's committed to take his gravity in the air. Potter makes a great play. Foul will go against Daryl Parker, the junior from Vista, California. That's Aaron Johnson. He was not ticketed on the play. Jerron Brown, 6'9", and uh, needs to put on a little bit of uh, weight. He's a redshirt freshman from Dallas. Both of these schools really will recruit all over the map. They really will, and Jerron Brown is a redshirt freshman, and actually, as you look at him and talk about him needing to gain weight, he took the season last year and worked on gaining some weight, so this is actually the new and improved Jerron Brown at this point. Well, he needs some more waffles and pancakes <laughs> in the morning. Four to one. Great pass, and we'll get a charge sent it the other way. Wil Wilkins saw, saw Johnson cutting down the lane, but uh, Aaron put his 230 pounds of bulk here we'll get a look at some excellent defensive position. The defensive player certainly is there, has his feet set. Aaron Johnson had no way to get to the basket. Good defense. Dunks by one, reaching, there's the steal. Potter out of the field, and he was ripped to the floor. This is the kind of thing you can expect in a game that has this kind of rivalry between two teams, but Barry just wasn't going to let him have the basket. He did what he had to do to stop it from scoring. Now, if you're going to make a foul, this is a great steal, by the way, but if you're going to foul somebody on the way to the basket, the one thing you want to do is make sure they don't score, and that's all Barry is thinking about. He got the block, but it was the contact after that caused the foul. I'd say there was a little contact <laughs> afterward. He actually got a clean uh, hand on the ball there, but it was his momentum in his body that crashed into Potter. So Jeff Potter has the first one down, a 77% free throw shooter, the psychology major. Oregon as a team is not a particularly good free throw shooting team this year. They only shoot about 65% as a, as a team, and Potter's one of the one that, ones that keeps them up in that percentile. But they're like uh, Rick Barry's at the line compared to Oregon State. They're at 62% from the strike. That could play a factor in the second half. Six to one. The Ducks have opened up a five-point lead. Three-pointer on its way, won't go. Kareem Anderson had the rebound, couldn't hang on. Williams takes it himself for Lando Williams. Drew, this is exactly the kind of game Jared Green wants to see right now. He wants them to apply pressure on defense, make steals if they can, or get re that rebound, and then move the ball up the floor quickly. He's forcing Oregon State to play his style right now. He talked about it yesterday, tempo. He said, we have to be up-tempo. Can't let them control the tempo. Here, they got exactly what they wanted. Yeah, on the missed three-pointer, the instant Oregon captures the ball, they're looking up the floor. Williams bringing it up, has wingmen to pass to, avoids them, decides to make the fake. Very clean fast-break finish. And Oregon's down 8-1. to one. Aaron Johnson was whistled for his second. Substitutions coming in. Henry Madden, number three, will come in. Also, uh, 50 coming in is Tony Rockland for Oregon State. Madden for the uh, Ducks and Rockland for the Beavers. Jerry Green in a transitional period right now. You mentioned at the open, it's in his second year coaching, but this is really the first year he's had his own recruiting class to work with. And some of these players were hand-picked by him, certainly, and he's having an opportunity to mold them. Madden being one of those players who is a freshman this year, but he has a very high potential to score. He was an excellent scorer in high school. We want to welcome the uh, folks on Home Sports Entertainment down in Texas and the Southwest to MacArthur Court in Eugene, Oregon. With John Lambert, I'm Drew Goodman. The Ducks off early on the Beavers, 8-1, to one, the 299th meeting. Brown, as he kicked out the pass, charged. Potter drew the charge. I tell you, Potter's doing it all. He scored that nice basket we saw earlier on the pump fake, and now he's playing great defense. He's made some free throws. See how he slides over. He's got his position. There's the contact. There's the charge. 
leaders never slept in the White House or any house. Introducing the Mighty Chieftains, first in Time Life's astonishing new book series, The American Indians. You'll cross the Old Northwest with Shawnee Chief Tecumseh, who told white settlers that the earth is not our property. You'll ride with Apache Chief Geronimo, who led one-fourth of the entire U.S. Army on a dizzying chase across the Mexican border. Call now to order The Mighty Chieftains for just $9.99. Use your credit card, and you'll also get a handcrafted Zuni animal fetish free. Other books will follow one about every other month, like The Way of the Warrior and Spirit World. Examine each free for 10 days. Washaki, Blackhawk, Red Cloud. They'll come to your house and bring you into their world. Call 1-800-819-6600 now to order The Mighty Chieftains for just $9.99 plus shipping and handling. Use your credit card and get this Zuni animal fetish free. Enjoy your holiday Monday, then Tuesday, we start out your sports week right, Sports Channel Primetime. Are the Niners still on the road to the Super Bowl after taking on the New York Giants in the NFC playoffs at Candlestick Park? And Chris Weber and the Golden State Warriors, how did they fare against two of the best teams in the Western Conference? The Sharks looking for momentum heading into the NHL All-Star break. That comes your way Tuesday night, and it's only on Sports Channel. The Ducks off early, 10-1, to 1, and John, they're doing it on the defensive end. Well, here, Beryl, uh, Daryl Parker manages to strip the ball and make an easy layup, and what, what's happening here is Oregon State likes to play a more set-up style of, of basketball on their offense, but they're actually getting stripped by the intense defense that the Oregon Ducks are managed to apply. And Kareem Anderson, who averages 17, I don't know if he's gotten one off. He has the basketball now. They quickly double him. Oregon State again loses it. Fortunately, they get it back. Jerron Brown picked up the garbage underneath, and he has all three points for the Beavers. Here's Potter from the elbow. Anderson hauled down the rebound. Brent Barry, free throw line. He's rejected, but like Jordy Light, who just checked in after the timeout, also hacked him. I tell you what, Jordy Lyman on this play actually has excellent position. Barry's got no business taking this shot, and Lyman just got a little aggressive. If he'd have kept his hands up, held his position, he'd have had a clean block on Barry. Yeah, Barry was, it looked like he was already bringing it back down. He had no way to put it up. We have a whistle inside. It'll go against Oregon. Henry Madden, first personal. Field goes early. Oregon State with just four shots. So not like uh, things aren't falling. They're not even getting opportunities. They well, they put a fork in the basketball. And through the ten points that Oregon has scored have all been off turnovers, so they're not even getting an opportunity to shoot the ball. There's another one. Stephen Brown looked to force the shot and lost the handle. Potter, offensive-minded, but he walked. How often do you see that when you fake one way and go the other way? Generally, you'll hear a whistle. It's a difficult call for the official to make because he has to watch which foot is planted as the pivot foot. If he makes the wrong decision, the player can keep all the traveling. This is a different story with the turnovers from the first meeting between these two schools because Oregon turned it over 20 times in that four-point loss, and Oregon stayed only seven times. So giving them a taste of their own medicine in this ball game, so you think it reverse the polarity. Drakeford. Missed a three-point jumper. Here comes Wilkins out of the 
the pack. You can see why they like Wil Wilkins here at Oregon because he's so explosive. He brings the ball up quickly, looks for his teammate, forces the rest of the team to run. Potter jumps. Potter with the uh, jump stop. And then the easy lay in. Potter now with six. He averages 10 and 5. Just a steady player. Very steady. 12-3. And we played five and a half here at MacArthur Court.
rainforest are burning. Less rainforest means less rain and an even greater threat from global warming. Right now, you can join the National Arbor Day Foundation and support rainforest rescue. Your call will mean that the wildlife, plants, and people that abound there will not be lost forever. In the few seconds I've been talking, a forest the size of five city blocks went up in smoke. You'd better call. Squaw Valley, USA is number one in the West for its winter games, and Fort Ranger is the number one way to... Travel arranged through Northwest Airlines, who with global partner KLM serves for... And right now, it's the Oregon Ducks flying, 19-7 over Oregon State. Drew Goodman, John Lambert from MacArthur Court in Eugene. After the timeout, the Ducks showing a little zone trap press here for Oregon State to consider. 10-second call by the official, and that's another turnover for the Beavers. I think Jerry Green starting to get under Jim Anderson's skin a little bit in this ball game. I'm sure he'll have a few words with his team when we finally get toward halftime, but it's been a long first half so far for Jim Anderson. Oregon State now with eight turnovers already. They average about 15 a game. This field goal situation, again, the big story is not really that Oregon State not shooting it well, it's that the turnovers have denied them shots at the basket, period. Johnson, again, comes off a screen and buries that little 16-footer. A little down screen, he comes open. He's got a nice little touch from the outside and credit his teammate for getting him open with a nice pick. Barry all the way, and that won't stick. Brent Berry, you have to watch him because he can get frustrated very early. He's got so many tools to work with, and when the ball is going for him like that, it can really create some problems. Johnson looks to take it himself. He was stripped from behind. Barry's ahead of the field. Well, Barry makes his own play there. He steals it from behind and gets the outlet pass for the nice dunk. That's got to make him feel a little bit better for the miss he had just a moment ago. He was the MVP of that Far West Classic when Oregon State beat Oregon. Inside, easy bucket. Zach Sellers, the junior transfer from Michigan City, Indiana. What's key to notice here is the difference between the way Oregon is scoring baskets and the way that Oregon State has to score baskets. They've got to force the ball inside. They've got to play against some tough defense, whereas Oregon is making fast break basketball. That was the 17th foul already on Oregon.
Orlando Williams, who just came back, has seven. Anderson working against Williams right now. 14-point bolds for the Ducks. And Orlando taunting him a little bit, telling him he can't get past him and can't score. Can't score. So two of the better players for these opposing teams really going at each other. Stephen Brown, way off the mark from outside. Is that three on Barry? He doesn't even have to look to Jim Anderson. He just knows it's time to take a seat. And again, a very frustrating first half for Brent Barry. Orlando Williams making a great pass up the floor here. And great decision on the part of Parker not to take the ball up right away. Barry coming in pursuit. Makes the grabbing foul. You have to be smarter than that, don't you, John? You really do. You have to know when to take your, your swipes at the ball and when not to. And that's one of those in instances where you're right there in front of the official, and he's got a great opportunity to see what's going on. Trent Inglesby has come in for Barry. So he might have to sit the rest of the half, 9.48. He has two points and three fouls. The average is 14 and a half.
He's an interesting young man. He says, I'm a little homesick leaving Los Angeles. I miss my mom. But he is uh, adjusting quite nicely. He was recruited by a lot of schools. Maybe the second best point guard last year in the Los Angeles era, uh, area. Rockland got in the air and no place to go. Well, that's the difference right now between the Oregon State team and the Oregon team. Oregon State is putting out on the floor a couple of walk-ons, and that time that was Rockland, who was a walk-on, didn't have any way to go. And all, also, Trent Inglesby is on the floor right now, number 10, and he's a walk-on as well. So they're having to substitute with players that don't have a lot of collegiate experience. Seven turnovers the last meeting. They've already eclipsed that mark, and there's still 7-12 left in the first half. Leiden penetrates, and he was stripped down low. Good play defensively that time by the Beavers. Stephen Brown tries to go one-on-one. -on -one. He was double-teamed. Didn't have court awareness there. Madden gets his own rebound, puts it back up and in. Count the basket. Well, we had a textbook fast break on that sequence. Ball going back and forth between the Ducks until they ultimately wound up. There you see the shot, the miss, and the follow. Quickly taking it up to the basket is Madden, and he gets himself the basket and the shot of the free throw. Tony Rockland picks up his first, and now Oregon State with 17 fouls. Henry Madden, of course, a freshman we mentioned earlier, has scored 44 points in a high school basketball game, so he's no stranger to looking at the rim, that's for sure. Isn't it amazing that the uh, guy that was a gymnast, you hear that so frequently, a guy picks up a sport late, but I suppose if you have the athleticism, it doesn't take long to uh, adapt. If it's not for him, just two years of high school basketball. First year he was the team MVP, and the next year he was the league MVP. Learns quickly, I'd say. Yeah. 16 point lead matches the largest for the Ducks. Seeing a little zone defense on the part of the Duck team now, giving Oregon State something different to look at. They've got to react and move the ball against the zone, and then they wind up forcing a shot. Brown, Stephen Brown, the one to force it. Lied. Wilkins thought about it, leans in, high archer, that uh, was off the mark, but the little fella picks up his own rebound. Another wild shot by Oregon. They may not have scored on that sequence, but that was an entertaining effect. Kareem Anderson backs up. Stephen Brown. And Lyde tag Brown, and Stephen Brown right now is frustrated. Well, the Ducks are really working hard. Here you see Wilkins trying to create a shot, and the complacency of the Oregon team is really the kind of thing that upsets the head coach when your players don't go and get on the defensive board. Consequently, Oregon gets a couple of extra shots, but none of them seem to go in. We get a look at Jordy Lydon, his third personal foul sends him to the bench, and he's to be congratulated. At least he's playing tough, hard-nosed defense. Stephen Brown averages 16 and a half. Folks, he's been blank so far. Also comes in six in the Pac-10 and assists. 33-18, 15-point lead. Boy, he 
see a little bit of the emotion these Oregon Ducks have, and they are really getting the crowd into this ballgame. Look at this block here. Inglesby never had a shot at the basket. He goes up, tries to juke it in the air, tries to fake the defender, but out of nowhere comes the shot block. Jerron Brown gives to Stephen Brown. No relation. Anderson. I think the call is on Jerron Brown, if I'm not mistaken. That is the first on Jerron. Jockeying for position, Jerron bound through an elbow out, and it caught his defensive player in the throat. Official was right there to make the call. Dave Libby. So at the other end, Potter will have uh, a one and one. You know, Jerron Brown has been in foul trouble so much this year. There was one game in Provo, Utah. He actually had six fouls and finished the game because the uh, official score lost count. They determined it afterward. Potter, five of five this afternoon from the line. He has nine points. Both of these schools visited Los Angeles this week, and it was not a good trip. It won't be a good trip for most schools. That's a tough way to start your Pac-10 season is to go to Los Angeles and play the Bruins and the Trojans. Potter turns around and gets two points for the uh, same free throw he missed a moment ago. As relaxed as the Ducks and as intense as the Ducks are, it's just the opposite for the Beavers right now. They're just not comfortable. They're forcing bad shots. That time they managed to get one to go. Stephon Brown finding the basket. He's left-handed. Puts it up strong. Don't even know if that was a shot they wanted, John. No, it isn't the kind of shot they want, but someone's got to assert themselves and bring the ball to the basket, and Stephon Brown's the man to do it. He's just six foot, and he's inside posting up. You have to add the fact that he's six foot and he weighs over 200 pounds, so he takes up some space when he's on the floor. He's got the ability to create shots as Potter goes out to a big hand from the fans here in Oregon. Potter, a couple of fouls, but 11 points. He has played well. David Brown comes in. Bobby Edwards also uh, departs. David Drakeford will come in for Oregon State. Jack Sellers back on the floor for Potter, Oregon. Three-point play competed, completed for uh, Brown. He has four.
credit Stephen Brown because he's trying to make something happen, but one on five. Well, Stephen is also taking the shot before his teammates are in position to get a rebound. When you watch Oregon work their offense, there's always a player near the basket that gives them a chance for that second opportunity. Curry will go out. Parker will, will come uh, back in.
15 for Kareem Anderson. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds left in the first half. shot off a little while then that'll do it for the first 20 minutes great half if you're an Oregon Duck fan and there's plenty here at MacArthur Court they lead by 16 in the 299th meeting of the Civil War yeah exactly turnovers as we mentioned a moment ago really the big key 13 more points off of turnovers for Oregon than for Oregon State so they've really got to contain the basketball get the tempo in their favor and they're going to make this a close one possibly before the end. We've always talked uh, today about the tradition of Oregon State basketball. The University of Oregon does not share uh, in that same tradition uh, on the basketball court. Jerry Green is used to winning. He has decided to go with uh, a young nucleus and also the junior college route to try to turn the program around his second year. Would you concur with that philosophy? Absolutely. He's got seven new faces on the team this year that he's got to work with. He's got three returning starters and as a result he's starting to build his own team in his second year. He inherited quite a number of players from the Don Monson era and now he's had his own recruiting class come in and he's done the right thing. He's gone to the junior college transfer ranks to get some maturity and as he goes forward with the scholarships he has available you'll see this program really change in the coming years. Well right now they're doing okay. They come in four up and seven down as do the Beavers. Somebody will win their first Pac-10 game today. Both clubs at 0-2 in the conference. We'll give you two guesses. For Oregon State, Kareem Anderson missed only one shot in the first half, five of six. He had 15, then Jerron Brown was seven, and Stephen Brown was two of eight from the floor, had six points. They'll need his offense in the second half. And for the University of Oregon, Potter with 11, Williams 7, Matt, a really good balance, John. They really do, and we talked about the keys to the game. Oregon State was supposed to get their big three uh, involved and get them clicking, and the big three are not making it happen for Oregon right now. Brent Berry, three personal fouls and only two points in the first half. That's a critical uh, problem for them. He averages almost 15 points a game, and for him to have two points in the first half just isn't helping the club at all. Talking about the balance, there is Brent Barry, who spent most of the first half on the bench. Only four players for Oregon State scored in the first half. For Oregon, nine different players got in the books. You remember when you played uh, at Southern Cal, certainly, and you used to come up here. You had a great story you were telling me before the game got going about what they used to do, the University of Oregon, under Dick Harder in pregame. Well, the team used to try, to try and perpetuate the environment that exists here in the pit. What Dick Harder used to do is have the non-shooting players during warm-up stand at half court, right at the half court line, and try to stare down the opponent before the ball game and during halftime. So what I played for Bob Boyd at USC, he used to send the six of us that weren't shooting at half court and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. We'd be nose-to-nose -nose looking at each other's eyes, no one making a face or a move, and it really got the fans involved, got the players pretty excited as well. Look like a heavyweight title <laughs> fighter, or, or Roberto Duran, at least. Or the Jets and the Sharks somewhere yeah. from West Side Story. There you go. The Rumble. Yeah, there you go. 46 to 30, Oregon. Leading by 16 over Oregon State. The pit. That's what they call it here. MacArthur Court. It goes straight up. It looks like uh, an old theater almost. It really does. And it gives you the feeling that the fans are right here with you. And actually, they are. And, and that's tough sometimes for some younger players who are playing in large arenas, even out of high school nowadays, to get adjusted to. It. Doesn't seem to be a problem for Kenya Wilkins, though. He feels right at home yeah, in the pit. He starts in the backcourt along with Orlando Williams. Aaron Johnson, Jeff Potter up front. Johnson missed the tap. There's Potter with the follow. Also getting the start, Daryl Parker. The Potter just picking up right where he left off in the first half. Playing smart offense and good position basketball. Drakeford and uh, Stephen Brown in the backcourt for Oregon State. Jerron Brown, Kareem Anderson, Brent Barry up front for Oregon State. There's Brown, offensive rebound, and he gets it to follow in. Tough shot between two defenders, Johnson and Potter, both there trying to distract him, but he maintained his composure. Potter with position. As I mentioned, Jerron Brown 
trying to handle the pass from Brent Berry. Finally gets the rebound. Now watch, he has to really maintain his concentration because you see four hands out extended trying to distract the shot. Mentioned that both schools uh, lost to UCLA and USC, and a number of Pac-10 schools will have trouble on that road trip. Oregon State gave up 104 points in their loss to the Bruins, 104-71. They lost to Pauley. It was only the fifth time in 93 years of basketball in Corvallis that they gave up more than 100 points. Says quite a bit for their defensive ability. Tough call, I'll tell you. 
what I'm really impressed most, most with right now is the Oregon Ducks' poise on offense. When they've got the ball, they wait till they see a shot that they want to take. They're not afraid to pass it back and forth amongst themselves. Now, Oregon State, on the other hand, is moving the ball, but it's almost as if we're waiting until someone feels the urge to take a shot. Very little fancy dribbling there. Get some reaction from the crowd, but it doesn't help the team get any closer to the basket. Like he backed up after he put it behind his back. There's another example of, well, we passed it long enough. Let's shoot now. Good job by Stephen Brown. I will say this, Stephen Brown's shots may not be falling today, but it is not because of a lack of hustle. He has rebounded, he has made plays defensively. But not enough for Oregon State. Boy, Parker stayed with it on that one. Forced Stephen Brown to commit himself and then took it right up to the basket. Parker has 10. He averages just a little over two a game. He's another junior college transfer. He was at Maricosta Community College last year. 19-point lead. Brown throws it away, and he is beside himself. 15.46 to go. All ducks. Oregon leading 55-36. Look at this effort by Daryl Parker a moment ago. Moments before, we saw him give it a triple effort. That time, he just stayed in the paint, went to the basket. Oregon with the basketball. Field goal situation in the second half. Neither team lighting it up, but uh, Oregon could probably shoot 30% and be okay in this basketball game because they look 16 at halftime. But Oregon State certainly have to pick it up. Williams trying to beat Drakeford off the dribble, gets away with the uh, elbow, pushing off to get separation, and uh, left his uh, baseline jumper short. Moline, who just came in. Still good pressure on the ball from Oregon. Anderson has such great rotation on his shot. He has 18 to lead all scores. He really does, and he's a strong shooter as well. He goes up with good strength, good balance. His feet are wide apart. Excellent technique for a shooter. Got his name because his father was a big basketball fan. Williams tries to answer at the other end and does so. Orlando Williams, he's got 10. That's just what Jim Anderson doesn't want to see. They get out of the hole by three points. They'd like to come down and see a good defensive sequence, and as a result, they come down and give up a three. Jalami Bolin. There's the freshman, Kenny Wilkins. Said, I wasn't sure I could play in the Pac-10 at this level until I went to Los Angeles and performed well. He had a sensational game. He had uh, 17 points and four assists, four steals. Right in there against one of the better point guards in the country. Quite a bit of the hometown crowd turned out to watch him play, family and friends, and he gave them what they were looking for. You see Orlando Williams there wishing that the official had seen the travel prior to the foul. But the second call takes precedence over the first this time, and Oregon State gets the ball out of bounds. Sometimes Brent Berry's teammates just aren't ready for the passes he makes because he's distributing the ball very well, just isn't working. And speaking of Brent Berry, he's really been double teamed and triple teamed, and he's starting to feel, I'm sure, a bit frustrated on offense because you can see the crowd of players he draws every time he has the ball. Matt scoops it up. He's short. Drakeford tries to wind out of there. Wilkins picks his pocket. Well, you see Jerry Green over there on the bench shaking his head. Yes, he loves it every time Kenya gets a steal. And he has such poise, he brings the ball back out, sets up the offense, takes some time off the clock, just what a coach wants to see. Potter 18 feet away, a bit long. Good box out by Jerron Brown on the long rebound. Wilkins started from day one here. He's the kind of impact player that coaches want to give the ball to and say, run the team, I'm going to trust you. And the sooner the player knows that he's got that kind of confidence from his coach, the better he's going to be.
Here we see Kenya just swarming around. One minute a player turns his back and tries to make the spin move, Kenya's right there waiting to make the steal. Grew up in South Central LA. He said, uh, once it got dark out, I went inside. Ron Brown. And good hustle on the baseline, but Bobby Edwards was out. So Oregon will get the basketball. 58-39. If the Ducks could beat the Beavers by 100, the crowd would stick around. I don't think anybody's going to pull off in this ball game at all. Wilkins penetrates and lobs it over everybody. Seven now. dental emergency to happen. Get Dentemp today and be prepared. Caps and crowns can loosen unexpectedly and cause embarrassment. Fillings can fall out and cause pain and discomfort. Dentemp was developed by a dentist to temporarily replace loose caps and lost fillings until you can see your dentist. Dentemp helps you avoid unnecessary pain, helps eliminate embarrassment. Don't suffer needlessly. Get Dentemp today. Call now for more information and money-saving coupons. Discover the hidden secrets of America's finest baseball school in a professional instructional videotape. Teaching the mechanics of the Major League yeah, Swing features professional side, scout and instructor Tommy and Mansky and position. the same award-winning tested under fire techniques that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Coach Mansky's study and analysis of thousands of baseball's best professional swings has yielded a no less than revolutionary oh approach to consistent yeah. hitting. It's proven, and you'll love its easy-to-understand, step-by-step video training methods. Teaching the mechanics of the Major League Swing benefits players of all ages and ability levels. A valuable addition to any coach's library, too, and it makes a great gift. Thousands have been sold at $39.95, but if you'll call now and use your credit card, you'll pay only $29.95. Call 1-800-942-6700 for your copy of Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing. That's 1-800-942-6700. This is the tape that gets results. Northwest Airlines, who with global partner KLM, serves more than 380 cities around the world. Northwest, some people just know how to fly. Back at MacArthur Court, 60-41, to 41, Oregon leading Oregon State. Drew Goodman along with John Lambert. Another Oregon State miss inside. Henry Madden rips down the rebound. Sometimes when the breaks are going your way, they just keep going on. Aaron Johnson unable to hang on to that pass up the court, but managed to save it somehow. When the ball finally went out of bounds, it was off an Oregon State player. Great numbers for Kareem Anderson, but he is the only one for the Beavers with good numbers. He's got half of the Beavers one. Barry, open floor, finger roll won't go. And again... Bobby Edwards makes a save for the second or third time today. He's made a save, but one foot was uh, over the baseline. Well, Barry trying to do the right thing, trying to bring it to the basket, but instead of coming in strong and using the glass, he opts to go over the front of the rim and just misses a layup. Rick Barry 
Curry's had four sons play college basketball. Curry hammered Barry, and Barry's on the deck. He got popped in the nose. It looks like he's actually it's not Edwards, Edwards. Edwards. Edwards took a shot right in the face. You get a second look at it here. You can see Curry trying to get to the basket, and he actually ran into Edwards' nose, I believe, with his head. It wasn't an elbow, and it wasn't a fake. He just gave him a headbutt. Now, if there's blood, Edwards will have to go out, and there is. Edwards, another one of the Beavers' walk-on players. He's an academic player, has a great point average last spring, a 4.0 out of a possible 4.0, so That'll he's work. an excellent student, but the depleted ranks of the Oregon State Beavers have required his time and services on the court, and this time he's paid the price for it. 10.48 to go second half. Oregon leading by 19. We've been stuck at 60-41 for a while. Oregon State, in the first year under Jim Anderson, went 22-7. and seven. He was the Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Since that time, they were 13-14, and 15-16 and 16 last year. 14-14. and 14. So mediocrity, at least the last few years, has hit Oregon State. But you would imagine they will be able to turn it around at some point. They have a way of always coming up with uh, at least one great player, it seems, every seven or eight years. And we should, we should also mention that Oregon State also has three key players that are out most likely for the season. J.D. Vetter, who's been a real substantial player, is out for the season. Sonny Benjamin is out. And Mustafa Hoff, who has a back uh, problem, is not playing as well. So they've got three uh, scholarship substantial players that are sitting there on the bench at this point not able to contribute. Yeah, Hoff in particular is outstanding. Guy who can rebound and score. Tonight, action from the Pac-10 will continue as Prime Hoops moves to Arizona. Stanford ready for an upset as they tip off against the sixth-ranked Wildcats. That's tonight on most Prime affiliates. We're at MacArthur Court in Eugene, Oregon. And the home team leading by 19. And now they're going to clean up the court a little bit because some blood spilled on the floor. And these days uh, in sports, we are very, very careful as to... Uh, what we do, particularly when there is blood. Yeah, I find it interesting that uh, in basketball, and I, as I think it should be, they pay very strict attention to this type of thing, but I can imagine that every weekend when I watch either collegiate or professional football game, they don't uh, follow the same same rules. The player does not leave the field, he does not bandage his arm up, and uh, if he should be playing on, say, AstroTurf or some other substance, and it winds up uh, getting some bruises and abrasions, I haven't noticed that in football. No, I haven't either. But I don't know what you would do because literally in football, there could be you know, 22 guys on the field. Half of them could have cuts at that point that, that are bleeding. I mean, Half or better. Right. You'd have six-man football out there. I don't, I don't know if you could properly take care of the, the potential danger or stop in the game of football. Or stop the game for the amount of time it would require to uh, attend to those yeah, injuries. Football's so. not long enough as it is, right? <laughs> Second half field goal percentage is down for both clubs. And again, Oregon State can't afford to shoot 24%. They trailed 16 points at halftime, and they're down 19 right now. Brent Barry has just not been able to get anything going. He picked up three fouls in the first uh, nine minutes of the first half, and he has been held to one field goal. That did come in the first half. Nothing could help him more than gaining a great degree of consistency in the last two years of his collegiate career that will help him move on to the next level. And, and at this point, anybody you talk to about Brent Berry will tell you, hey, he's got all the tools, he's very gifted, he can be brilliant at times, but often he's inconsistent, and that's not a label you want to have if you're trying to make it to the next level of competition. Anderson, three of three this afternoon from the line. Brent Berry's uh, brother Scooter played at KU. John was at Georgia Tech, now at the Milwaukee Bucks.
do this. I made a vow a couple of years ago that uh, every time there is a tie-up, I will use that to uh, get on a soapbox and tell everybody how much I despise that uh, rule of alternate possessions. You'd prefer to see the jump ball yeah, reinstated. Throw it up in the air. Out of three officials, somebody ought to be able to get it straight up in the air. I have to, have to say I agree with you. I was usually taller than the opposing player. Yeah, from your, from your standpoint, I'm sure. They put me up against Kenya Wilkins, and it was it was a field day. <laughs> that or it might have been very embarrassing <laughs> for both of them. <laughs> Some of them would elect not even to jump against uh, Kareem in his day. They yeah. just stand there and let him go for it, maybe hope they can get the ball some other way. Big change is now for Jerry Green. He's done that throughout the ball game. And that will make his basketball team, as you alluded to, John, much better when February and March rolls around. Absolutely. The more experience he can get in his players right now, it's like putting money in the bank. Here's Boleyn. Throws up a wild shot, and it rips the cord. Jelani Boleyn, the freshman from Whitney Young High School in Chicago. Jim Anderson has a couple of players from that high school program. It can be very frustrating to be on the bench and see your teammates not performing well, and the one thing you feel you should do when you get in there is at least get a couple shots at the basket and try and make something happen. And that can be dangerous because players start to play much more relaxed and much more loose when they think the game is sort of out of, out of range. They just start getting relaxed and start scoring baskets. Gerard Brown missed uh, the three-footer. That could have made it a 13-point ball game. Would have been the closest Oregon State's been in a while. They skip it to Parker. Sellers had the pin down, wanted the basketball, but Parker uh, didn't give it to him on the blocks. Wilkins. Parker has it ripped and steals it back.
right now, you can get a red carpet lease on Ranger. Just $192 a month for 24 months. Ranger wins on style, on toughness, and on value. And it's just $192 a month for 24 months. See your four theaters, Ski Squaw Valley, and prepare to be impressed. Wells Fargo has been coming through for Californians since Gold Rush days. Outstanding record, outstanding performance. Today, you'll find an impressive lineup of services to help you stay ahead of the game. Like Wells Fargo's 5-Minute Max Teller service or 24-hour person-to-person phone service. And to keep you financially fit, a full roster of products for reaching your personal goals. Wells Fargo Bank, strong for Californians since 1852. From the stars of the game to the strokes of the masters, Tennis Television has it all, including private lessons and the Tennis Lover's Vacation Guide. Join Brad Holbrook on Tennis Television every week on Prime. Oregon 62, Oregon State 47 with John Lambert. I'm Drew Goodman from MacArthur Court in Eugene. The 299th meeting between these two schools. Number 300 will come in February down the road in Corvallis. And coming into this ball game, Oregon State had won 175 of the previous meetings. Wilkins with the steal. And he's blocked from behind, and Barry gets in his face for a moment. But if I was uh, Mr. Wilkins, I'd say take a look at the scoreboard, Brent. Well, Wilkins not afraid to apply some strong pressure in the backcourt. He's playing against a player that doesn't have the kind of quickness he has. And, the, and Ingles, uh, Inglesby just jumped to him when he comes to the basket. He thinks he's got a free shot at the hoop, and Barry just comes in and hammers the ball. Right now. Anderson standing right beyond the three-point line. One of the rare hits <laughs> for that's him. The, that's the payback, the payback play by Sellers. He manages to come from behind and make a very similar play to the one that Barry just made on Wilkins. And I'll tell you, this kind of play from both of these players, from Jerron Brown and from Wilkins, they'll be looking over their shoulders as their careers go on. They're both freshmen, and they'll be looking to see where the, the pursuit is coming from. Barry has it picked free. Wilkins piling up the steals. Easy bucket. Wilkins is something. He makes everybody on the floor just a little bit better. Jerry, Parker got the layup. And Jerry Green has got his jacket off. He's up off the bench, and he's he's coaching like he hasn't coached in the last two ball games for sure. He's loving it. There is Stephen Brown. Quiets the crowd. Brown with 14. If he continues that kind of range, they'll be calling him downtown Stephen Brown. That was yeah. way outside the three-point line. Kenya's got such great quickness, and what I like is if he doesn't have the penetration shot, he's looking for his teammates, and what's more, they're looking for him. See, he's got no shot right away. Boom, it goes over to uh, Parker. Parker to the basket for two. I like his hand. I mean, he's close to the ground, but he has a good little handle. Ryan Smith will give Wilkins a blow. There's going to be four years of real enjoyment here at the pit. The fans are really going to come to lie, uh, love Kenya Wilkins. Parker penetrates on the baseline, and he was knocked away. This is as close as Oregon State has been, however, in a while. They're down 14, and there's enough time, 6.43. Boleyn goes out, and Bobby Edwards comes back in for Jim Anderson. he realized he was going to lose the handle he figures the best thing he can do is bring it to the basket you'll see that just prior to that he was starting to fumble with the ball a little bit brings the ball to the basket strong and forces the defense to collapse and he draws the foul well you know when you're 6'9 230 unless your uh, first name was Irvin you probably are affected by it. well you got to look at the fact that uh, Kenya Wilkins is on the bench right now. He's the one who usually handles the ball, so how can they point the finger at me? That's Why not right. bounce it a little bit? Yeah, there you go. Little guy's taking a rest. Coach, I'm trying to help him out. <laughs> Chance to cut it to 12, maybe 11 for Oregon State. Count the basket. They gave continuation, maybe NBA continuation for Brown. Crowd doesn't like it, but the Beavers now 
A chance to get back in this thing. Stephen Brown has a variety of shots. He also can deal with the contact. There you see, he was clearly on his way to the basket. He had brought the ball up off the dribble when he was fouled, and there's some of the frustration coming out as he slaps his teammates all high five. Ryan Smith got ticketed. Oregon now over the limit. That's their seventh team foul. So one and one is coming to Oregon State. We got ourselves an 11-point game. This is a real difficult situation for Oregon right now because as soon as Oregon State, and I mean right now, is starting to feel that they might have a chance to win this game, the heads that were dragging and the lungs that were getting tired are now coming back to life, and these guys are going to start hustling like they never have before. Hunter tried to draw contact and did. And if it's on Barry, it's number four. Now, this isn't so bad for Oregon State right now if they do commit some fouls. Now, Potter's a very good free throw shooter, and as we see him bring the ball to the basket, he does the right thing. He doesn't walk away from the contact. Rather, he instigates it, gets himself to the free throw line. But what's good for Oregon State at this point is they are not letting the clock run at this point. They're, they're, they still have over six minutes left on the clock if Potter misses either of these free throws and they can get back down to the other end and score. They're going to be in good position to have a chance to win this ball game. 6.09 to go. Jerry Green's club up 12. And Potter, 9 of 10 this afternoon from the line. He's got 15 points. Anderson gives off to Brown. He is the explosive first step. Kareem Anderson elevates. Jerron Brown, another offensive rebound. He goes up, and he'll go to the line. Jerron Brown has good instincts, and when he gets the ball, he makes some critical mistakes because he puts the ball back down on the floor. As he matures a little bit, gets a little bit more weight, you'll see when he gets this rebound, he could go straight back to the basket, but he opts to bounce it, try and bring it up. Now he's in traffic. Defense has had a chance to recover. Very difficult to get the ball to the hoop in that situation. Good rebound now for Jerron. Crucial time. 
into the basketball game because Oregon State's only down a dozen. And you're seeing the difference between the luxury that Jerry Green has with Kenya Wilkins handling the ball versus Edwards for Oregon State. Just two totally different ball players. And when it comes down to crunch time, you want a guy like Kenya Wilkins handling the ball who can really run the offense and maintain a certain amount of composure for your team. I say uh, there's a difference down only to 12, but Oregon State has been behind by as many as 22 in this game. Shot clock at three. Wilkins has to get one up. Tries to draw the foul. And it comes down to Kareem Anderson and then take it away. And the hot pass, a little too hot for Potter. Good play by Sellers, or check that. Good play by Parker. But the pass, uh, a little too fast. Well, we were having a look at it quickly. The ball right out of Potter's hands into the basket. Now back to the live action. Brown penetrates off the dribble, and the shot won't drop. Wilkins saved it, but nobody home underneath. 66-54, Oregon State holds on to the basketball. Edwards goes out, and Jelani Boleyn returns. Anderson on the reverse side. He has 24. 10 point game. Plenty of time still left for the Beavers to crawl back in this ball game, but if this possession is very important to Oregon. Their cuts aren't as crisp all of a sudden. Well, they're thinking about how close the Beavers are getting. And they've whittled away, as you mentioned, uh, an excessive of a 20-point lead. Now it's only down to 10, so they've got to pay attention, and no one really wanting to shoot the ball right now. And again, the shot clock down to three, John. Well, they took clock away, but they don't get a bucket. Barry pulls down the rebound, and Oregon State can get to eight, maybe seven. Brown will try to make it seven, but he was fouled. Three shots coming for Stephen Brown. Stephen took his time to line that shot up. He realized the defense wasn't coming to him. You'll see he's a little deeper than the 19 nine-foot stripe out there, but he lets it go. Almost made the basket as well, but as you mentioned, wisely, Drew, he gets three shots from the free throw line. Daryl Parker now has four personals. 329 left. That's an eternity in Oregon State to get it to seven right here with the clock stopped. This is truly amazing because this game has been very lopsided. And when you consider the firepower that Oregon State has, both with uh, Kareem Anderson and Stephen Brown, and, and even Brent Berry, if he should come to life, you know, they've got the ability to hit the three-point shot from the outside and bring this ball game right back to its top. Brown went to uh, Ventura Junior College. Jim Anderson recruited him out of there. He's a speech communication major, 64% from the free throw line. He had 22 points and six assists against Oregon in that earlier meeting. So we'll get a timeout for Jim Anderson. One more free throw coming for Brown. Drugs are bad news. Man, I pass dealers on my way to school. See guys in the alley doing crack. I even saw somebody get shot. I already know about drugs. But what I want to know about now is, how do these fly? Our kids have better things to do than drugs. But they need our help to keep it that way. lead for Oregon and Oregon State has been on an 18 to 6 run 
over the last 9.50, and they've slowly crawled their way back in the basketball game. Stephen Brown will have another free throw to cut it to eight. And what's interesting about this, Drew, is it's not really so much in my estimation of what Oregon State has been doing right. It's that the Oregon University of Oregon Ducks have started to get away from their game plan and allowed Oregon State to come back in. Oregon State's still playing the same basketball. Maybe a few shots are going in for them, but the Ducks have stopped to play the kind of basketball they were playing in the first half. And Brown, one of their veterans, makes the steal after making only one of three free throws. So Oregon State, another chance to get it to seven or six. down for Kareem Anderson who's now missed his last three shots he missed only one shot in the first half and big rebound for the Ducks by Daryl Parker right position right idea brought it down and protected it didn't try to make the outlet pass Kareem Anderson got what he wanted his best shooter alone at the three-point line Potter with an offensive rebound big stick back for the Ducks Potter has missed a couple of gimme shots on passes that have slipped out of his hand and I'd be real surprised if he doesn't grab on to every ball from here on in. Brown weaves in. This time it's live. And we've got a blocking foul. Stephen Brown with his third. Watch Potter here on the low block. He takes his time, gets his feet set. You notice he didn't bounce the ball, took it right to the basket. Potter's got 17. 220 left. This is a huge possession for Oregon. If they uh, move this back up to 13, there might not be enough time for Oregon State. Well, and they're wisely running a lot of time off the clock right now by running their offense all the way through the pattern. And here we get a very foolish play by Madden trying to get position. He waved the right arm out and gets called for an offensive foul. Jerry Green can't believe it. I don't know whether he's upset with the official or upset with Madden for making the play. There you see Madden putting his arm up. Barry's trying to come over the back, but Madden pushes him off. The official right there to make the call. A little bit iffy there. Could have gone either way, and I think Jerry is upset with the call. Not so much with Madden. Ten team fouls now on Oregon. So Oregon State is out of the one and one. They shoot two the rest of the way. And Brent Barry, a 71% free throw shooter who goes underhand like his dad Rick used to. One of the great free throw shooters in the history of uh, the NBA and of the ABA. Rick was in the league the same time I was in the league. And his belief is that your elbows are in the same position when you shoot the ball that way and there's less likelihood for uh, a miss. Well, it worked for him. Apparently it worked for Brent just now. Yeah, those are big free throws. Wilkins is tagged. And that is now the seventh team foul on Oregon State. So Wilkins will go to the line. That's number four on Stephen Brown. 2.01 to go. And what Jerry Green is certainly thinking right now is he wants his team to try and at least maintain control of the basketball. He doesn't want them to get any more silly offensive fouls while they've got possession and just maintain good composure and let the clock do its work for him. Another chance to get it to seven or six. Every time you think Oregon is put it away against Oregon State, the Beavers have come back. And they get their best shooter a shot. This time Kareem Anderson way short. Well, they're forced to take the outside shot to get it in close, but if it were my choice, I would be trying to work the ball inside, maybe force some foul situations because they're going to get to the line and shoot at least two shots. Boleyn tried to rip it from Wilkins, but he fouled him. But that's not a bad play because the freshman's only a mid-60% free throw shooter, and you can't let, correct me if I'm wrong, John, you can't let Oregon wind the 35 seconds off no, the no, clock. Better to have the clock stopped and have the opportunity to get another shot. And uh, as you mentioned, he is a freshman, and he's been playing a lot of minutes in this ball game. Fatigue has to be setting in somewhat, and he's got a lot of responsibility in the last minute and a half of the game. He's got 10 in the ball game now. Seems like more. I mean, he has really handled the ball well. He's distributed it. You know, if you were to tell me he had a quiet 20 points in this ball game, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, that tells you 
something about his character. Ball game uh, on the line, getting tight, and he nails two free throws. 127 to go, it's back up to 11 for Oregon. Barry, big three-pointer and a timeout. So Brent Barry, who's been quiet throughout the ball game, a forgettable ball game, if you will, for Brent, but he hits his second field goal, and it's a 19-niner, and OSU within eight of the Ducks. Well, good rotation by Oregon to get the ball around. Oregon State very just spotting up outside the three-point line and immediately calls the timeout. Live tomorrow, a prime hoops doubleheader from the Atlantic 10 in Great Midwest. Beginning at 4.30, George Washington looking for an upset against 23-ranked West Virginia. And then the uh, Bama Blazers of uh, UAB will take on Memphis State. That's a lot tomorrow, beginning at 4.30 Eastern on most prime affiliates. We're at MacArthur Court, Eugene, Oregon. Drew Goodman, John Lambert, 70 to 62, Oregon. Leading Oregon State in the game they called the Civil War. I have some good friends that attended the, the University of Oregon, played football there, and they said uh, back in the 60s and the 70s, there was uh, not only a difference uh, obviously in who you rooted for, but there was just a, a philosophical difference. Oregon State was a more conservative institution and had the shorter haircuts, and the University of Oregon had the, uh, the longer hair, and it was a little more liberal atmosphere in Eugene. There you see a lot of the advantages going in the University of Oregon's direction. They've got possession on the next tied-up basketball, and they also have two timeouts left where Oregon State has none. Certainly look for some real pressure defense here because possession all important for Oregon State. Almost threw it away. Right with the good hands. And there is the steal. Oh, Bobby Edwards could not save it. And there have been about three or four times today that Bobby Edwards has been in position to make a steal or to save a basketball, and each time he was out of bounds, barely. Well, about half of his foot was across the line on that play, so it was very clear for Garibaldi to have a look and see that he was out of bounds. Wilkins. Gets it to Lyden. Barry pops it away. Here comes Oregon State. Anderson fires a three. It's a five-point game. No, they're saying it's a two. Nearly another steal. Tied up, and Oregon will get the basketball. But they have become really frigid not only offensively, but they are playing scared right now, John. Well, they're trying to maintain the lead rather than carry it on and, and, and attack the basket. And on that particular play, that possession arrow so important to Oregon, that would have been a turnover on their part, ball going over to Oregon State, giving them another chance to score. 50 seconds, six-point lead by Oregon. Jim Anderson setting up his defense. Meanwhile, Jerry Green will get Orlando Williams back in the ball game. Good move by Jerry Green if he can get, and he does get Orlando Williams back in the game for Leiden. Leiden very uh, suspect on the last two possessions with his handling. Lost the ball almost on the out-of-bounds play and then had it stripped by Barry. Jump ball, possession changes back to Oregon State. So Oregon State, the far more aggressive team right now, and it's paying off. Well, Oregon hoping for a foul call, reaching from behind is Edwards, but Moline, the one who had the ball from the front, manages to get uh, the jump ball call, possession arrow going to Oregon State. 48 seconds left. Oregon State trails by six. Someone for the Oregon State team is going to have to step forward and make this shot. Barry had a great look. And it goes out of bounds off the Beavers. Barry's had a tough afternoon, but you got to give him credit for being able to step up there and take that shot. Some players would not look to take it. Stephen Brown penetrated and then went behind him to Barry, who was spotting up. He was all alone, John. Exactly what they wanted. This Here's is a big basket. Foul. Parker will stop. Huge basket. Oregon back up eight. 
a force at the other end. Brown got the rebound and has it rejected again. Oregon State has no timeouts left. Wilkins comes away. This could do it. Johnson blows the layup. Well, they continue to make it interesting. 17 seconds left. It'll take a minor miracle, but Oregon State had a couple of opportunities. Here, Johnson goes up and tries to flip it around underhand and not using the backboard. A dunk would have been a better shot. He'll hate to look at that one on videotape tomorrow. Brown's shot is off, and Oregon will have the basketball with eight ticks left. Well, I think they finally feel here at MacArthur Court like they can officially celebrate. You have to expect the foul in that situation, and Daryl Parker, unable to find a teammate to pass to, gets fouled and now goes to the free throw line. Give Oregon State credit this one. They were hopelessly out of it for two-thirds of the game. And slowly but surely, they made things happen defensively and got some baskets on the offensive end and closed to within six points. And they had some good looks to get it uh, closer than that. I guess Jim Anderson saying it is official because it'll get, yeah, he's, it'll get crazy in here in the final few seconds. And uh, he will shake the hand of Jerry Green right there. Parker, the steal, and the block by Brown and the layup will count. The final score, 74-64. Oregon wins the 299th Civil War over the Oregon State Beavers. We'll have a final thought right after this timeout. The final score from MacArthur Court, Eugene. The Ducks over the Beavers, 74-64. Drew Goodman with John Lambert. John uh, looked like it was going to be a runaway for quite a while, and Oregon State made it interesting down the stretch. I think for Oregon, the most valuable player might have been Jeff Potter inside. Without question, Potter played a very excellent game, handled the ball well, put it in the basket when they needed it. And not you can't say enough about Kenya Wilkins for getting the ball to him as well. But uh, credit Oregon State for hanging in, to, in there till the end. They made it interesting. They'll do it again for the 300th time in Corvallis in a couple of weeks. Pac-10 action continues on Prime. In Prime tonight from Tucson, the Stanford Cardinal with freshman Phenom. Brevet Knight meet the Arizona Wildcats and super senior talent Reeves. 10.30 Eastern, check your local listings. Once again, the final score from Eugene, 74-64. The Ducks over the Beavers. For John Lambert and our producer, Steve Woodruff, I'm Drew Goodman saying so long from Matt Court in Eugene. Have a great weekend, everybody.